Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about Hepatitis B virus infection and its management. It's a DNA virus. It is transmitted through sexual contact. There is a main uh, route of transmission, mother to child transmission. And nowadays, it is mainly due to intravenous drug abused route. Blood transfusions all, uh, can also spread a virus from one person to other person. But nowadays, due to strict uh, investigation during blood transfusions, have reduced the incidence of transmission of hepatitis B, HIV, hepatitis C, and all uh, in our patients. Percutaneous also explained that means without any skin injury or injury to the skin, the virus can spread through intact skin. That is also not that is also possible. But it is not well established like a transmission through an injury. But rarely it can occur through the skin also, even without an injury. With injury, the transmission rate is very high. So that's the structure of uh, hepatitis B virus. There are a lot of uh, antigens over the uh, hepatitis B virus. And during the investigation, these antigens can be very helpful because there will be antibodies formed against this uh, antigens we can pick up those investigations most of the patients who is having hepatitis b infection they are asymptomatic most of them are asymptomatic without jaundice and some develop jaundice around 30 percent of the patients develop jaundice very rarely they develop fulminant hepatic failure that means severe hepatic failure in very uh, short interval that occurs in 0.1 to 0.5 percent of the patients chronic carrier state that is described in patient 1 to 10 percent so many patients are asymptomatic some are symptomatic but some of them will become uh, chronic carriers they can have the virus in their body and it can spread throughout their lifetime or till the virus is levels are coming down. Again, the chronic phase has highly a replicative phase. During that replicative phase, patient can have active hepatitis B grow, growth. Then there is a low replication or uh, inactive chronic hepatitis B. So chronic hepatitis b can be sometimes uh, it can progress uh, most of the time that will subside within uh, six months of uh, duration it may subside without any sequela but some have progressive hepatitis some have progressive liver damage some can develop cirrhosis some can develop uh, hepatic failure and rarely around one person can produce hepatocellular carcinoma Again, chronic patients can present uh, fulminant hepatitis, acute on chronic infections can have hepatocellular carcinoma, we already seen, extra hepatic manifestation like polyarthritis nodosa, glomerular nephritis, cryoglobulinemia, serum sickness, uh, papillar acrodermatitis, many other aplastic anemia, many other complications also can occur. Now, we will see what are the conditions which can predictive for the disease progression HBE AG that is antigen against of HBE antigen patients with prolonged replication phase have a worse pro worst prognosis due to the development of cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma HBB DNA high HBB DNA is also associated with high risk for progressive disorder HBS AG levels if the level is very high, again it indicates bad prognosis. Acute co-infection with hepatitis C virus or hepatitis D virus can also be a bad prognosis. So these are the prognostic factors in hepatitis B. Now, there are a lot of antigens uh, in the uh, virus on the body body surface of the virus. They all can produce antibodies against that and during clinical evaluation we can pick up these antibodies and we will see what type of disease it is whether it is an acute infection 
uh, active replication, progressive state, cirrhosis, like that we can even diagnose. So, hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B core antigen, hepatitis B envelope antigen, hepatitis B core X protein, hepatitis B virus DNA polymerase. So, all these things are uh, different types of proteins present in the body, in the virus body and they can induce antibody production in our, uh, our body. Uh, that gives a diagnostic clue for various clinical presentations. Now, in acute phase, hepatitis antigen is positive, HBS AG uh, is positive, uh, and during uh, like chronic phase, it can uh, it can present and if uh, remain it if, it if it remains positive for uh, more than six months, we have to suspect chronic hepatitis. Antibodies to HBS AG, anti HBS is also present in vaccination. Patients who are vaccinated, we can see anti HBS AG and anti HBS levels we can see to see whether patient require revaccination or not. Hepatitis B core antigen, HBC antigen and antibody to HBC. IgM anti HBC. HBC IG, uh, anti antigen is not detectable in blood test, but anti HBC IgM is seen in acute infection and anti HBC IgG is seen after recovery. So, IgM is in acute phase and IgG is in chronic phase. HBE antigen and antibody to HBE anti HBE. HBE antigen is seen during acute state of uh, disease. Present, uh, persistent HBE antigen indicates active replication of the virus in the liver. So, whenever we are suspecting chronic hepatitis, if we see anti HBE, sorry, uh, HBE antigen, if it is levels are very high, then we have to suspect active replication of the virus. HBV DNA by PCR, if DNA levels are very high, uh, that indicates again active replication. So, these are the common investigation we do in hepatitis B. HBV DNA, DNA is one of the important tests we will do in uh, hepatitis B infection. HBV DNA more than 10 to the power of 5 copies per ml is seen in active replication, that is very, very important. So, higher counts indicate active replication during uh, resol resolution of the disease it will be negative and uh, high counts always indicates uh, high replication, low counts indicate low replication in chronic hepatitis B. You can see these are the investigations in the various stages of hepatitis B. You can see acute hepatitis, you can get uh, HBS AG and the HBC IgM. HBE antigen, chronic hepatitis B plus active viral replication, we have to see that uh, HBS AG present more than 6 months, then IgG anti HBC is positive, HBE antigen is also very high because active replication is there. Chronic hepatitis B, low viral replication, again IgG anti HBC is present, anti HBE antigen also seen. Recovery phase, again anti HBS is positive, anti HBC IgG is positive, anti HBE may or may not be positive. Vaccination, anti HBS is positive, that is very, very important, anti HBS is positive in vaccination. So, these are the routine investigation we do in patients who is having hepatitis B. Other lab investigations like liver function test in acute hepatitis, viral hepatitis, the SGOT, SGPT will be very high. And in chronic phase, most of the patients may have infection, but they may not have hepatitis. In that condition, HBS, uh, uh, SGOT, SGPT will be normal. But in a patient who is having chronic hepatitis with active liver disease, SGOT, SGPT will be elevated. In a chronic liver disease like cirrhosis, you can see SGOT, SGPT will be mildly elevated then there will be albumin globulin reversal. Albumin will be more than globulin. That indicates chronic liver disease. And again, prothrombin time and INR will be highly elevated in severe liver diseases. 
HIV ELISA also should be done. Uh, both HIV ELISA and uh, anti uh, anti uh, uh, anti HBC also uh, HCV also should be done. So hepatitis C and uh, human immunodeficiency virus both should be uh, both tests should be done in acute phase because uh, there will be co-infection of these two in major uh, sexually contracted diseases. Liver biopsy can be done in a patient who is having suspicion of uh, chronic liver disease and we can rule out active uh, inflammation of liver or cirrhosis or fibrosis all these things can be ruled out by liver biopsy. Now, management most of the patients who is having hepatitis B without any major treatment itself it will subside. So we have to give only supportive therapy. In fulminant liver disease or fulminant liver failure, we have to we can give NS NSTL cysteine and other supportive medications. Acute liver failure, uh, NSTL cysteine dose is 12.5 milligram per kg per hour for four hours. Initially, it was started as 150 milligram per kg per hour for one hour, followed by 12.5 milligram per kg per hour for four hours. Then continue infusion of 6.25 milligram per kg for remaining 67 hours. So it will be similar to uh, the dose which is given in paracetamol poisoning. Otherwise, we can simply give uh, 500 milligram TID IV infusion. So both can be given. Either give it as paracetamol toxicity or give 500 milligram TID. Both doses can be given. Most of the cases will recover without any problem. 90 to 95 percent of the patients recover without any major issue. Now we can <coughs> give antivirals in acute phase. Patient with severe liver disease, coagulopathy more than 1.5, persistent symptoms, bilirubin more than 10 for 4 weeks. Patients with fulminant hepatitis B red reduced the likelihood of uh, re reinfection, post-viral transplant. In patients who are immunocompromised, like, like other diseases are the uh, diabetes, malignancy, or HIV, all these things we have to treat. In patients who have co uh, associated in infection like hepatitis C, hepatitis D, or HIV, pre existing liver disease also we have to treat. We routinely use drugs like endecaver, tenafover, lamivudin, adifover. Albivudine. These are the commonly used drugs in hepatitis B virus infection. Lamivudine was the first drug introduced. Later, uh, drugs like endecaver, tenofovir, and adifovir has come. Now, chronic infection indication for treatment: either elevated STOT, STPT, continuous active liver disease or high, very high viral load, HPV DNA very high. For HPS AG positive patients with evidence of chronic HPV infection, treatment is given when HPV DNA levels more than 20,000 IU per ml or 10 to the power of 5 copies per ml. And when serum uh, alanine aminotransferase, that is ALT, is elevated 3 to 6 fold uh, for for more than three months. In HBE negative chronic hepatitis B infection, treatment can be given when HBV DNA more than 2000 IU per ml or 10 to the power of 4 copies ml and serum LT elevated, LT more than 20 units per liter for female, 30 units per liter for males for three to six months. And histological evidence of active inflammation in the liver tissues that can be done by liver biopsy. Treatment is lamivudin 100 mg per day for one year, adifover 10 mg per day for 48 hours, tenofovir uh, another drug 300 mg OD for 48 weeks, endecaver 0.5 mg daily, telbivudin 600 mg once daily and alpha interferon also can be given if the viral loads are uh, uh, patients with uh, low viral loads. Now, these are the drugs which can be used in hepatitis B infection. All the drugs doses are given in charts. Low viral load, we can try interferon alpha. 
Now, many of uh, these viral infections, depending on the genotypes, patient response will be varying. Some of the genotypes, uh, patient may not respond at all to your treatment. H, uh, it, has, uh, proved, it is proven that there are eight genotypes in hepatitis B virus. HPV genotype D, C are associated with lower rate of favorable response to interferon alpha therapy than genotype A and B. Resistance to lamivudin is higher in patients with HPV genotype A infection than patients with genotype D infection. So, genotyping is very, very important in hepatitis B infection to know the prognosis and drug response to the uh, antivirals to the virus. So, this is a genotype mediated treatment plan. You can see here uh, different genotypes respond differently to uh, treatment. Now, prevention is very, very important. Uh, so, in a patient who is having uh, 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 like you want to take an immunization against hepatitis B, there is a vaccine, pre-exposure vaccine is there, three doses can be given, 016, 1 ml intramuscular deltoid uh, can be given. For patients require rapid immunity, like they are already exposed, we can give 0, 1, 2 months, but follow up by a booster, booster dose in 6 months during uh, to give a long term immunity. Protection is 80 to 90 percent for 5 years, 60 to 80 percent for 10 years. Booster doses are recommended when the HPS levels falls less than 10 uh, IU per ml. That is when uh, as healthcare professionals, when we get a needle prick, we can uh, suppose we are already immunized, already we have taken vaccines in the past, we can see the immunity level. Immunity level means anti HPS level we can see. If it is less than 10, we have to uh, uh, take a booster dose. Otherwise, uh, booster doses may not be required. For an unvaccinated pe person who exposed to hepatitis B, then we have to go for HBV immunoglobulin. 0 0.06 ml per kg single IM injection and followed followed by the, that we have to take vaccinations. So, that can prevent acute infection. So, in a patient who is having acute infection, immunoglobulin plus vaccine, if the patient is having uh, previous, uh, previous immunization history and uh, exposure to hepatitis B, look for anti-HPS titer. If the titer is low, give booster dose. If the patient uh, not if the patient had not taken any vaccination and is entering for a uh, profession like doctor, nurse or any healthcare professionals, better to take this vaccination before entering to the profession so that we can uh, prevent the disease during uh, our routine work. Like if we get a needle prick and all, uh, we can uh, suppose we are protected, uh, the chance of getting infection is low. Uh, and again, we have to go for HB, anti HBS level, and we can see the levels are very low. We have to give a booster dose, we have to take a booster dose, and if the levels are very high, no need to take a booster dose. So, we have discussed about one of the important, invest, important disease that is uh, hepatitis B infection. Hepatitis B infections are very, very common in our country. Many patients who is having hepatitis B infection can come to emergency room and accident needle pricks are very common in healthcare settings, especially in emergency room. We should know how to manage the post exposure prophylaxis in hepatitis B or hepatitis C and HIV also. For that matter, all uh, diseases like uh, hepatitis B, C or HIV all are important. We should know the post exposure prophylaxis against these uh, diseases in that one of the most important condition is hepatitis B. So, we have to know the post exposure prophylaxis also here. Thank you.